Hi guys, welcome back to Coco 3D. In this video, we will be talking about some top secret thing about the games that you should definitely know. So let's get started. So now your game is completed and it looks amazing on your PC. But when you put your game inside a mobile device, it just does not feel right. This is because when we talk about the games, the one thing that is the most important of all is not the game's graphics that we see on the screen, is not the game's animation or VFX, and not the sound or music of the game. So the one thing that is the most important in the games is the frame rates. Yes, how smooth your game actually runs is the most important thing. Now let's first check how the frame rates affects our game. Now this is a gameplay with 60 fps and it looks quite good. And this is the exact same thing with only 30 fps. We can literally feel some difference. Now if we move further, this is the gameplay with 15 fps and it is just not playable anymore even though you have the best graphics in the world. So from this we can say that the frame rates are the most important thing in the game. Now when we talk about the mobile device, these devices are actually very powerful but only in terms of the calculations and not in terms of the rendering. That means even a device with a low configuration can run your nested loops but if you give it something to render then the device is going to face a hard time doing it. Now that does not mean you can write whatever you want. We have to take care of the code optimization as well but in this video we will be only focusing on the graphics optimization. Now the graphics optimizations are basically of three types. First is the UI optimization, yes the user interface with which the player interacts. Second is the 2D scene optimizations for 2D games. And third is for the 3D games, where we have to do the 3D graphics optimization, like the 3D models, textures, etc. Now there is one rule which is the most important in the optimization and is applicable to all the three types is just do not render anything that is not visible to player as it makes sense to not to render the things that player cannot see and it will also save a lot of processing and the rendering power of the machine. So now let's start with the canvas optimization. Now one thing you might be thinking about is the canvas optimization really matters? Well yes, if you are working on a game like Toy Blast or Bubble Shooter where you have a lot of UI elements inside your canvas then you have to optimize your canvas accordingly. Now Unity provides us three types of canvases and these are canvas overlay, canvas camera and the world canvas. Now among all of these canvases, the canvas overlay is actually better than the canvas camera and the world canvas because the canvas overlay does not have any world's coordinates and canvas overlay does not worry about the things that it has to render in front of it just like an option we have with the other canvases due to which canvas overlay saves a lot of overhead for us. So basically we can go for the canvas overlay whenever the type really doesn't matter. Now with the reference image like this, let's implement our rule number one. So now in Unity we have a basic scene, we have some basic demo buttons and we have some UI that represents a lot of levels in our game. Now as we can see some of our elements are rendering outside the boundary of canvas that we really didn't want as the player cannot see that. And to solve this problem, we can just add a magical component into our canvas whose name is React Mask 2D. And as soon as I add this component to my canvas, bang, everything is just gone. Now our game will not render anything outside our UI canvas and it will save a lot of rendering power. Now with that, our first step is completed and our next step is the UI simplification. Now to understand that, let's open Unity one more time. And in here, I have created this button which will allow user to buy 500 coins for 1.99 USD. So now let's first check this button. And here, as we can see, this button actually consists of a lot of images inside it. It has some patterns, some clouds, some outlines. So basically, this button has a lot of images inside it and Unity has to render all the images one by one just for this single item. So now, to overcome this problem, we know that it only has 
three dynamic fields a title icon and the price so we can basically combine all the rest of the images into a single image in our any image editing software so just to save some time i have already did it so let's check that out its name is shop button simplified and as you can see both of them looks almost the same but our simplified button has very less amount of ui element as compared to our original button and unity can now render this button much faster than our original button so just like this you can replace all your ui elements that takes too many images inside them and you can just simplify it so after doing all of that our simplification is now finally finished so now the third step is creating a ui palette so let's open unity one more time and let me just delete this old button now even though we have removed all the ui elements that the player cannot see and we have simplified our ui due to which our game ui has improved a lot but still the images that we can see in our scene has different source files that means unity has to load quite a couple of images from our project to load up this entire scene and we can help unity by creating a 2k or a 4k texture palette which is going to have all these images inside it now to do that open your favorite image editing software and simply create a new image now the size i am choosing for this image is 2048 by 2048 so while choosing the size of your image you should select it in a power of 2 that means 512 by 512 1024 by 1024 and so on because these resolutions are basically convenient for unity's image optimizations functions now you can just simply drag and drop all your images that makes up your scene so here i have imported all my images so here all we have to do is to align our images properly so they do not intersect with each other so let me just do that so now it looks fine and let's import it back into unity now this is our palette now convert its type to 2d sprite and ui and change its sprite mode to multiple as we have multiple images inside it then simply click on apply now open the sprite editor click on slice type automatic is fine and simply click on slice and it all looks fine now simply click on apply to save all these changes and here we can see all the images inside our 2k texture palette and now if you wish you can delete all your old images and you can replace it with these new ones now let me just replace my background and as you can see it looks the same and all you have to do is just to repeat this step for all of your images and now after that we are now basically loading our entire scene with a just a single 2k texture palette which is great now to make it even more better we will do one more thing which is known as multiple canvas setup so now let's consider that we have a canvas in our game and inside that canvas we have some images buttons and text and let's say whenever someone clicks that button this image rotates like this now to render that animation on the screen canvas has to redraw that image again and again until the animation is completed but the catch here is that the canvas actually redraws everything inside it that means just to render this animation canvas will redraw the images the buttons and the text as well which will waste a lot of rendering power and can make your ui feel a bit laggy now to avoid this problem we can have a setup of multiple canvases where one side we have a static canvas which will hold all the ui elements that are static and in the other side we have a canvas which will hold the elements that have some animation on it and with this multiple canvas setup our game will perform much better now guys with that our canvas optimization is completed and i believe after these four steps your canvas will perform fantastically and guys that's it for this video as the canvas optimization has taken a lot of time so we will cover the 2d and the 3d optimization in some other video but till then do share me your tips and tricks that you use inside your game 
and let's share it with everybody. Now I will see you in the next video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Coco3D. Bye.